What? Wow, I'm excited. We have a lot of cubes to go through today. Also these, don't ask why, I'll talk more about it later. I'm most curious about this one. This is a limited edition X-Man Tornado V2. I've never seen a cube box like this before, okay. Looks like they're not very experienced at designing these. <laughs> I can always count on cube companies to displease me with their packaging. Whoa. Oh, it turns like the tornado, I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, just like the tornado V2. What? What the heck? Why? Why is this? What? This is a glass cube with the X-Man logo inside and it does this cool optical illusion stuff. You know what? I'll take it as a cool gift, like an apology from X-Man for their stupid packaging. I have the orange cube. It looks like on the box there are different colors here, so maybe you could get any of the six colors and I just happened to get orange, which honestly is a bit disappointing. I think I would have preferred any of the other colors. But I don't have an orange cube yet, so I guess that's cool. Okay, this looks way better from the inside. Wait a second. It's just pure orange on the inside, but the outside has a bit of this white. And if the whole cube was just pure orange, I think I would really like it. That's a really weird design decision. Now let's get these stickers on. I will peel off the outer part. This blank piece is application tape. The application tape goes onto the stickers. Sometimes it doesn't come up right away. There we go. Well, there's one side and I am already very worried because it just looks like a white or transparent kind of outline and I am not gonna be able to see the orange. And the second side is on. Why does orange on orange look better than red on orange? Third side, looking not too bad. Fourth side now, I can officially do this. I've solved five sides, but I can't get the last one. So there it is. I have to say it looks pretty neat, but not amazing. I'm actually seeing this a lot more than I'm seeing the orange. It's more when you open it up that you can see it. I'm reminded of why I should never use stickered cubes ever again. Oh wait, this is missing something. There we go. Next is the Christmas stuff. It's Santa and he's not doing anything weird. He's just wiping the sweat off of his face from delivering so many presents. I love this year's Christmas cube. It's just white for a snowflake and the rest is all blue and silver. This one is also supposed to glow in the dark so I'll have to check that out later but I love the blue base cube as well. I am so happy I don't have to put on the stickers myself. We also have new Christmas themed bags. Oh no. This looks like the one from Shrek with the crazy lips. The lips on this guy always creeped me out. There's Santa and oh, a penguin. What just happened to my camera? Unfortunately, my two by two penguin doesn't fit in here. There you go, you're a chef. So the cube now, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to solve this thing, but first I need to make it good with candy cane lube. Get it smelling all festive and candy cane-y in here. Before I scramble it, I need to know the pattern. The dark blue and this side have the line through it and this side is not the same. Uh, let's start scrambling. Okay, the cube's definitely feeling much better now. I should be extra careful with it though because these stickers look a bit delicate with the pattern that they have. Mmm, smells like candy cane, so you know it's a good cube now. Okay, as you guys know, I am a pro at solving on weird color schemes, so this is gonna be fun. Except this time, four sides are blue, so I take it back, I'm not gonna have any fun. Wow, this is so weird. Every time that I turn it, I actually smell a little bit more candy cane. <laughs> I, I don't remember this happening before. All right, let's see what we got here for the cross. So um, this doesn't have a line through it, so this actually matches up correctly. And uh, this is the second darkest blue, which goes over here, okay. And this is the darkest blue, which I can put right here. Can I look ahead to first pair? Not gonna try. All right, all right. Nope, there's the cross. These two, do they go here? Yes, they do. Okay, this one goes with, oh, it's with this one. This goes with this. And uh, where's my last two? There it is. What? I just got a PLL skip. Let's see, yes, I got this right. Wow. This cube's the one, guys. Is it even worth trying again? Like 25, not amazing, but I got a PLL skip. You know what, we're trying again. Okay. Come on, first pair. This, These two, this one goes with 
uh, okay, it goes to the edge right underneath it. These two, and this one, and this one. Uh, come on, please. No. <laughs> oh, I beat it. It's a pretty fun puzzle, I gotta say. <laughs> the recognizing between the blues is actually really difficult, and I just really like the way that it looks. Whoa, look at that. Okay, so it's not actually as bright on camera as it looks to me, but you can definitely see the snowflake. So in case you guys don't know, when something glows in the dark, it's because it has been next to a light source for a while. So when you first get this cube, it's not gonna glow very much. You need to have it in bright light for a while. Here is a picture I took, and this is how it actually looks. It is really bright. If you get this Christmas cube and record a video of yourself solving it, then you can enter the giveaway. You can follow the link in the description for more details. Speedcube Shop sent me two Diane Tangyun version 1s. I'm not going to open them right now, but it is my main blindfolded cube. I like it because it's pretty effortless to turn and the slice turns are also pretty good. Uh... Actually, one is going to be my backup and warm-up cube, but the other one I got because my mom really likes the Diane Tang in version 1, it's her favorite cube, so I just got one for her. And I got a bunch more Stardust and Lunar Lube, I love these new bottles, and wait one, cool new design. These are the main lubes that I use, I rarely use any others, so these will last me a long time. Next we have two Yushin Little Magic cubes and two Cubers Home modifications of good cubes, and we are going to look at uh, these ones first. Well, for once, you don't have to learn Chinese because it is the Little Magic version 2 M. Thank you, Yushin. Very cool. All right, feels good quality. Let's give it a shot. Very dry. Yep, there is no lube, but it's got a fun scratchy feel. Let's just take advantage of this while we can, because this, just listen. This is a super satisfying dry scratchy feel that you only get to feel out of the box and it disappears very quickly, but we are done with that now. So of course this won't be a full review, but I'm gonna give my first impressions. The corner cutting is a bit tough. I may need to change the settings and reverse corner cutting is pretty good. This is the Little Magic V2, but I don't even remember what the first Little Magic felt like. It's been like four years. I think this one does feel more modern though. It relies a little bit more on its magnets for stability and the cube itself feels a little bit more flexible. I, I, I don't know what it is exactly. Something about my turning during the algs, but this cube really gives me not very good cube vibes. I can usually point to something very specifically and say that that's what's wrong with this cube, but I don't think any single thing is wrong with this cube. I just think the qualities of it don't work too well together, and that could absolutely change if I mess around with the settings, but there's so much to get through with this unboxing that I think if I change my mind on this and think it actually is a good cube, then I will make a review on it. And here is the 2x2. Two two. Oh, that looks cool. Let's see what's going on with this. Oh no, oh no. I lost my place. Something feels off about the reverse corner cutting. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, it gets really tough sometimes and it can definitely get stuck. Pretty much every recent 2x2 release has been at least somewhat good, but the standards are so high that I wouldn't recommend this as it also just feels really weird to turn. It doesn't feel like like other 2x2s, and not in a good way. Uh, I forgot my alg. Next is the X-Man Tornado V2 and the Moyu Weong WRM 2021. And you might be wondering why these again? Well, these are the Cubers Home Edition. Cubers Home is, I guess, a company that does these modifications. And what they do is they put magnets inside the core, just like with the newer GAN cubes. So let's take a look and see if this is any good. I hate when I open it from the butt. Okay, I guess I'll get my first impressions of this. Hmm. Okay, it feels heavier, but if you didn't tell me there were extra magnets in here, I don't think I would notice it. It may affect the cube more if it were faster. Okay, I thought my Worm 2021 was set up kind of slow, but this feels way faster in comparison to this one. So I wonder if it's the magnets that are making it slow, or maybe it's the fact that the cube is heavier that makes me feel like it's slow. There are a lot of possible factors here. Let's just take a look at the inside of the cube. Wow, okay, that's where a lot of the weight must be coming from because it's not just the magnet they've added here. It seems like they put this entire plastic ball-like thing around the core. For comparison, this is what a normal core looks like, so they've added a lot here to get that magnet in the middle. And what this magnet does is it goes with the corner magnets and these will interact like that. 
Okay, they're not even that close together. So it, there is going to be attraction between them that will add stability to the cube, but we've seen on the Gan cubes that these go much closer. So I don't know how much this is going to do. To me, the only difference that I really feel from this first impression is that it is heavier and it is slower, but it is not any more stable. I mean, slower cubes naturally get more stable, and I would never have guessed that there were just extra magnets in here because I don't feel them at all. Now let's take a look at the Cuber's Home X-Man Tornado V2, which also has the corner to cord magnets. Did I just turn a layer by doing that? All right, let's test it out. Uh, same sort of deal, it just it just feels slower. It feels heavier, it feels slower, and those are not things I particularly like. Is it any more stable? Like, am I am I making fewer mistakes? This, this just feels like a Tornado V2, but slowed down a little bit. It seems like they've added some entire apparatus onto the core, and here's the corner magnet. It looks like they're about a millimeter apart, or even less. So it, this should be a lot more effective than in the Worm 2021. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not really feeling it. I, I straight up do not feel a difference besides this cube being slower. I already don't recommend the Tornado V2 if you've seen my review of it. And of course, I don't think this improvement fixes its problem, which was mainly the reverse corner cutting being very difficult. All right, guys, we have the Little Magic version 3 Mega Minx, and we have all of this stuff. Which of these am I more excited for? Honestly, these. <laughs> These are not speed cubes. This is a new thing for me. And if you think this is weird, remember I got this earlier. So pretty much anything can happen in this video. Obviously, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. This is not what my channel is for, but these are on Speed Cube Shop and I thought it would be really cool, especially to have a Pokemon. Here we have the legendary Pokemon Rayquaza, one of my favorites for sure. And we have Goku from Dragon Ball. I watched Dragon Ball a lot as a kid and I actually don't remember a single thing about it besides my number one thing that I remember, the plot moved very slowly. What am I even doing right now? Will I have to read Chinese? Nope, I don't have to read. You see how small this is? I'm gonna have so much trouble making this. Why did I sign up for this? All right, we're just gonna speed through this. Building this was actually pretty fun, but it took a while. I think it was over an hour because there are 240 pieces. And finding the pieces isn't even all that tough. The hardest part is actually just holding onto the piece and putting it onto the structure because the pieces are so small. In the end, I got the job done and I have to say it actually looks really good. In the Pokemon games, Rick Quaza could remove all weather effects. Come on, fella. It's been raining too much here. Building Goku was actually a bit nicer because it's only 110 pieces, so even though I still had the exact same struggle as before, it was a little easier and he didn't fall apart quite as much. Yay, there's Goku, and he is a twisty puzzle because you can twist his legs and his arms. And now, Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Son Goku. <laughs> I was not expecting that. For Super Saiyan Goku, the instructions were actually very confusing, but what's nice is you can pretty much assemble most of this without even looking at the instructions. This one only took about 10 minutes. This is pretty much the size I expected, but you can see in the end that it is much bigger than the nano blocks. It's called nano block, but I didn't expect it to be this small. And finally, our detour is over and we have the Little Magic version 3 Mega Minx. What? Oh, I forgot they're called 666toy.com. This is literally nothing. This is just to make the box bigger. I feel like it's been a long time since I've turned a Mega Minx. Oh, wow, this is really dry. I've put in some Lunar Loop and done an entire solve, which I have not done in a long time. This cube, or this Minx, still feels very, very slow, and I don't know why. Can I reverse a T-perm? Yes. It's so shiny that sometimes like just the light reflection makes it hard to see what color a piece is. But my main issue with this is I need to push pretty hard to turn. It doesn't feel effortless at all. Here are some other Mega Minxes that I think I remember liking. These ones are all naturally a bit more effortless to turn, and I like that a lot because I already don't like holding a Mega Minx. It's a lot of effort. I think last time I said my favorite is the Diane Mega Minx version 2, and that, that's just because it's really easy to turn and is quite light, but I don't really do Mega Minx, so really, I think any of these are fine. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember to go to speedcubeshop.com and use the discount code JPERM, link in the description, if you want to buy any of the things that I showed today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.